Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below, where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com, where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. In Hartford County in Maryland, footprints next to the road were on the local news. Also, a week later, footprints were found less than a mile away in the neighborhood of Pleasant Hill. There was a seven-foot stride, suggesting that the creature may have been leaping or running. A family reported seeing a 10-foot tall creature. Noises like howling have been heard, along with mutilated deer bodies being found in the winter. There have been campers who have noticed something prowling near their RVs. This was within range of the Gunpowder River and Bel Air Road, Route 1. On to the next one. At the Little Bennett Campground in Frederick in Montgomery County in Maryland, I saw it from close up, about 20 yards or so. It appeared to be 8 feet tall, and its body was completely covered with brown hair. I saw it for about two minutes until it moved off into the woods. It happened at Little Bennett Campsite in Frederick, Maryland, at about 6.30 in the evening. It was a massive creature, bigger than any human I've ever seen. This isn't a hoax. It looked to be feeding on the leaves from trees. On to the next one. In Hartford County in Maryland. Well, it was heard from our house in Pleasant Hills, Maryland, where some strange things had been going on a few months earlier, but the noise was coming from about a good quarter of a mile away or less at the power line just west from the Jerusalem Mill, which is on Jerusalem Road and can be reached just off Maryland Route 1 and Mountain Road. The nearest town is Kingsville, just the noise, which was nothing like any of us have heard. In this area, it is not unusual to hear owls, foxes, or on rare occasions, cougars. My brother and myself have experienced all sorts of wildlife in the area, but nothing around here that I know of could have made this sort of noise. It was so loud and creepy that I'll never forget it. My father, brother, and cousins were witnessed. It went on from 9 p.m. to 10. It was warm and muggy out, and it was a clear night. The area was a large state park with rivers and streams and some patches of swamp covered mostly by large trees and brush. There are a lot of trails that start off around the mill and go toward the power lines, which are the only clear spot in the woods. Well, first things first, it was in the winter. There was a rash of strange sightings in the area, including footprints in my neighbor's yard about 100 feet away from my house that had been on the news. There were also prints found in other areas of the state park near Bel Air Road. There was even a story I heard about a whole family on Whit Road, right down the street, had seen an eight-foot-tall creature on their back porch one night, watching them eat dinner. When they started screaming, it took off. Also, all of my friends and myself have grown up in the woods, and for years, we found mutilated remains of deer thrown everywhere, possibly by cougar. But I have doubt a cougar could do this sort of thing. I've also heard stories from a man that's lived in the neighborhood his whole entire life, and when he was younger, his friends and him seen what they believed to be a Sasquatch numerous times around the power line. But it's been a long time since I've heard the stories, so I don't remember the exact details. On to the next one. 
It was near Falston and Kingsville in Hartford County in Maryland. Here in Maryland, there's not a lot to do. Mostly me and my friends just hang out. The local cops don't like this and neither do the business owners. So a lot of times we end up in park or parking spot. On this night, eight people were gathered at this location in four cars. We all met up in town around eight to nine in the evening. The cops decided too many people were gathering and chased us off. One local drinking or partying spot is nicknamed the Lodges. Basically, it's Gunpowder State Park. A well-known local fishing hole, the subject to Indian-related ghost stories, and a middle-of-nowhere spot in the middle of civilization. We decided to head there. We arrived around 10. We proceeded on the usual chatting of whose car is faster, who's dating who and such. Some people were using drugs. One or two had been drinking. Me, my friend Tom and Jason were not on this night. We all sat pretty quietly in our cars. Nobody had been out except for the occasional rearranging of seats for close to four hours. I do remember it was very cold that night for our area, probably around 40 degrees. And it was definitely before Halloween since we were making plans. Three cars were facing forward and three others were not. We were all parked side by side in a row facing an almost 45 degree grade of dense shrub and 15 to 30 foot tall trees. The road, bottom road, was in front and the bend in the stream was behind us with boulders and shrubs all around. Lighting wasn't the best, but... It was enough to make up the trees close to 50 feet away and the ground cover around them. What happened was around 2 to 3 o'clock, we all stopped talking to the noise of what sounded like someone running through the woods. I figured it was a deer. Then you hear it crashing down the hill in front of us. This sounded like someone taking a running step down the side of a steep, loose gravel hill, breaking off limbs and whatever else they could grab to help slow them down. Then plop out onto the road, lands this human figure. I was looking down at this point. In the car next to me, Tommy goes, Jesus Christ. And I look up to see a dark, huge figure hunched over to look back at us. Instinctively, Brian and I pull on our headlights almost at the same time. It was still a little hazy from the stream behind us. And all I personally could make out by the time my eyes refocused was what looked like a humanoid figure, close to eight feet tall, sprinting away from us. I can still distinctly remember the sound of it running away, exactly like someone running barefoot on blacktop or concrete, a slapping noise. I unfroze and got out. So did Tommy and Brian. We walked up the road a little, and I felt really weird. At this point, the last word spoken was Tommy's Jesus Christ. We all got into our cars. We sat there for about 10 minutes. Then, simultaneously, we turned to each other and said, It's getting late, or I'm too tired for this, and decided to all head out. Nobody spoke about this to each other for almost a year. Some people that were there still won't talk about it willingly or in front of others. Honestly, I thought it was a gag at first. There's also a lot of Indian ghost stories tied to the area because of an Indian graveyard. I don't know what it was. I don't care. All I know was that it was not a man. And it sure as heck was not a deer. If you guys can explain it any other way for me, that's fine. A lot of time has passed since then, and a lot of construction has happened also. But after the fact, I have heard of a few other sightings like this including a set of footprints less than five miles south of the area and within a year of our encounter. A few months later, into the depths of winter, there were some new stories about Bigfoot sightings in Kingsville neighborhood with some tracks in the snow. I didn't follow it too closely. They could have turned out to be hoaxes. I do remember them running the stories more than one time, maybe more than one instance. The weather was cold, crisp, and clear high clouds veiling a half moon, light misting fog on the water, and low-lying areas. Basically, it's a state park. For Maryland, this consists of a stretch of wood with a stream or tributary dividing it and an occasional footpath. 
on to the next one. In Worcester County in Maryland, the location was on Route 610, about six or seven miles from Route 50. While traveling north on Route 610 in Worcester County, Maryland, at around 11 p.m., my brother and I saw a figure on the side of the road. It was very large and dark. The light did not seem to reflect off of it. Honestly, it was as if the outline was what caught our eyes. Since we were in my suburban, I could tell very easily that whatever we were seeing was tall. I recall that my brother was so shocked he even jumped away from my side of the truck, which is where the figure was. Even to this day, the thought of what we saw makes my hair stand up. The figure stood motionless, facing toward the east. It made no movement whatsoever. I remember the light that was reflected from its eyes was a white, silvery color. Michael and I said very little on the way home that night, and we rarely speak of it today. Other than the total shock at what we had seen, there was nothing of note. My brother Michael and I were talking. I did mention it to a friend who lived very near to that area, and he had heard of sightings near that area from older people. I have never myself heard of anything like this on the eastern shore. There was very little in the way of lights, and there was, as I remember, no moonlight. It was very dark. The area is mostly farmland with plenty of wooded area around the fields. Deer are very abundant in this area. They can be seen just at the woods edge most evenings. On to the next one. In the far western portion of the Anne Arundel County, Laurel to be exact, where three counties come together, I heard a rustling noise behind what was a drainage pond for our community. It was summer, and the sun was getting ready to go down, so it was dusk-like. I turned, and, by the way, so did the dog, our Labrador retriever, and I could not believe my eyes. I observed a large, I'm guessing, 10 to 11 feet high, ape-like figure stalking the woods behind the pond. I would say it was about a 100 yards away. I just froze, and so did our dog. No one else witnessed this, and we both just stood there for what seemed like two minutes, until the creature turned and looked our way, then slowly turned and dashed back off into the wood, never to be seen again. I remember this like it was yesterday, but did not know about this sight until today, when my awesome nephew told me about it. So, here I am today, reporting this incident so everyone can be aware and know the truth. The only other witnesses was my Labrador Retriever, Daisy. I did hear of other incidences like this in Laurel, yes. Did not believe them until I had my own sighting. It was dusk. On to the next one. The following are a collection of First Nations legends passed down that could be of the Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Once, there was a man out hunting and he got lost, and after a while, he began to get hungry. He came to a big hole in the ground, and he thought he would venture down into it. He went down in there, and he found that the old Yeho lived in there, and had deer meat hanging up and other foods piled up around the walls. The man was afraid at first, but the Yeho didn't bother him, and he went toward that meat to get him some. The Yeho walked over and looked at the knife and said, Yeho, Yeho, a time or two. He cut off a piece of the meat, and it started eating it. Well, the man stepped over to the middle of the pit and took out his flint and built him up a fire. And the Yeho watched him and looked at the fire and at the flint and said, Yeho, Yeho, again. The man put his meat on a stick and grilled him a nice piece and started eating it. The Yeho watched him and acted like it wanted a piece. The man cut it off a piece and grilled the meat and reached it over and the Yeho commenced to eating it up and smacking its lips and saying, Yeho, Yeho. Well, the man lived there with it a long time, and they got along all right. After so long, there was a young and born to him, 
and it was half man and half yeel. And the yeehaw took such a liking to the man, it wouldn't let him leave. He got to wanting to get away and go back home. One day he slipped off, and the yeehaw followed him and made him go back. Went on that way for a good while, but he picked him a good time and slipped away. This time he got to shore, where there was a ship ready to set sail. He got on this ship, and he looked and saw the yeehaw coming out with the young'un. It screamed and hollered at him to come back, and when it saw he wasn't going to come, why, it just tore the baby in two and held it out, one half to him and the other said, Yeehaw, Yeehaw. He sailed on off and left it standing there. One time I was prowling in the wilderness, wandering about kindly, got lost, and so weak and hungry I couldn't go. When it began to get cool, I found a big cave and crawled back in there to get warm. Crawled back in and came upon a leaf bed and I dozed off to sleep. I heard a knackful racket coming into the cave and something came in and crawled right over me and laid down like a big old bear. It was a hairy thing and when it laid down, it went chomp, chomp, chewing on something. I thought to myself, I'll see what it is and find out what it is eating. I reached over, and a hairy-like woman was there, eating chestnuts, had about a half a bushel there. I got me a big handful of them and went on to chewing on them too. Well, in a few minutes, she handed me over another big handful, and I ate the chestnuts until I was full and wasn't hungry anymore. Directly, she got up and took off and out of sight. Well, I stayed on there till the next morning, and she came in with a young deer, brought it in, and with her big, long fingernails, she ripped its hide and skinned it, and then she sliced the good, lean meat and handed me a bite to eat. I kindly slipped it behind me, afraid to eat it raw, and afraid to not eat it, being she gave it to me. She'd cut off big pieces of deer meat and eat it raw. Well, I laid back and the other pieces she gave over as she ate hers. She was going to see I didn't starve. When she got gone again, I built me up a little fire and grilled my meat. After being hungry for two or three days, it was good cooked. She came in while I had my fire built, grilling my meat, and she ran right into that fire. She couldn't understand because it burnt her a little. She jumped back and looked at me like she was going to run through me. I said, uh-oh, I'm going to get in trouble now. Well, it was cold and bad out, so I just stayed another night with her. She was a woman, but was right hairy all over. After several days, I taught her how to grill meat, and that fire would burn her. She got shy of the fire and... Got so she liked grilled meat and wouldn't eat it raw anymore. We went on through the winter that way. She would go out and carry in a deer and a bear. So I lived there about two years. And when we had a little kid, one side of it was hairy and the other side was slick. I took a notion I would leave there and go back home. I began to build me a boat to go away across the lake in. One time after I had left... I took a notion I would slip back and see what she was doing. I went out to the edge of the cliff and looked down into the mountain, and it looked like two or three dozen of hairy people coming up the hill. They were all pressing her, and she would push them back. They wanted to come on up and come in. I was scared to death, afraid they were going to kill me. She made them go back and wouldn't let them come up and interfere. Well, I took a notion to leave one day, when my boat was ready. I told her one day I was going to leave. She followed me down to my boat and watched me get ready to go away. She was crying, wanting me to stay. I said, no, I'm tired of the jungle. I'm going back to civilization again, going back. When she knew she wasn't going to keep me there, she just grabbed the little young ones and tore it right open with her nails. Threw me the hairy part and she kept the slick side. That's the end of that story.
Wood Devils, Coos County, New Hampshire. Many years ago, I lived up in Coos County in New Hampshire. Some of the old men would talk about the things called wood devils that live in the woods. There apparently were a lot more of these creatures back in the 1930s than there are now. These wood devils were tall and very skinny. They are gray colored and very hairy. I guess that people saw them mostly when they didn't expect to. They stay in the deep woods. They can run very fast. When a person walked through the woods, he would nearly walk into one before he spotted it. They hide by standing upright and still against a tree. As a person approached it, it will stand against the opposite side of the tree. As the person passes it, will move so that the tree is always between the person and the tree. If it cannot hide, it will still stay perfectly still until it knows the person sees it. They make awful screams. They have a semi-human shape, but their faces don't look at all human. I have never seen one, but the people who said they did were regular churchgoers and would strap their kids for lying. I don't think they would carry on discussions of things they made up. If you have encounters of your own you'd like to share, check out the description box below where you'll find the email sstorysubmissions at gmail.com where you can send in your submissions to be read on the channel. You can also send in your fan emails. I love hearing from you guys. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!